All right, it's been a little while since I've done a video with an update, so I'm gonna cover some new features that I have baked into the attenuator. Uh, been working on this on and off over the past month. Uh, a lot of lessons learned after taking the entire uh, kit out for a spin for a full day at Dragon Con. Uh, that was an experience uh, with this thing clocking in around uh, 22 pounds. I don't know how some of the folks, uh, you all who have been, uh, you know, carrying around 30 plus pound packs. Wow, all the uh, all the respect to you for making it through a full day, because I felt about destroyed just after 20 pounds on my back all day. Uh, so yeah, uh, lots learned, lots uh, lots of uh, features enjoyed. Folks uh, who did uh, find me, uh, great to meet you. Uh, some folks on the uh, forum over on the GP Star uh, project page, and. Uh, a lot of other folks uh, I was able to meet for the first time uh, who didn't even hear about the project. And now that folks are getting their kits, I uh, figure y'all are gonna be interested in some, some new features. So I'm gonna get right into it. So if anyone has upgraded to the Fruto Vent Light, this thing is bright, like really bright. Like, see, it's not even at full brightness right there. Uh, what I've done is reworked some of the logic in here so that when you turn up the power, I'm turning it the wrong way. Yeah, so when you turn up the power, it turns up the brightness. But even when you fire, this isn't even fully bright. That is. So uh, that is a new feature that has been added. Oh, geez, it really should not look directly into this thing. It is unbelievably bright. So if you have upgraded to that, you will want the new 2.0 software uh, that we just put out. That includes that particular uh, fix, or not fix, a uh, particular feature. Right now, you either can compile it in if you are familiar with using the Arduino IDE, or you can use uh, what are now pre-compiled binaries. Basically, they are all the software for the wand or the pack. There is a special uh, custom binary that includes the Fruto Ventlight mod. And if you flash that one onto the wand, you will get that particular feature that adjusts the brightness. It will work on the stock LEDs, but because they're not quite as bright, the effect's not gonna be as, as uh, interesting. All right, so while we got this thing running, let's talk a little bit about uh, what I did with the attenuator. So walking around all day, I can attest that you know, the features that I got into it for day one, really, really helpful. Uh, the ability to change the volume as I'm, as I'm doing now. When walking around the convention, there's some areas that are a lot quieter or more echoey, uh, where you probably don't want the pack cranked uh, to maximum volume, even though that is really fun to do, and I may have done it a few times while in the habit trails walking between the hotels. It's, it's not something you want to do all the time, and sometimes you just really need to turn down the volume. And being able to do it right there on the pack uh, or on the, uh, on the shoulder strap is, was really helpful. We got the ability to start up the music. Yeah, it's going. So we got the music playing. But I kind of ran into something that I really wished I had while I was walking in the parade because I've got... You know, I'm walking, trying to watch where I'm going. I'm waving to folks, so I've got usually one hand free, and I can still, you know, throw a stream. I can do the, the lights. I can do the, the smoke effects if I let everything run. What I don't want to do is constantly look down to go into the menu system if I want to skip music tracks or I want to uh, adjust the effects volume because sometimes the effects can be overbearing if you're running both the music and the uh, effects at full volume each. So what I did was modified the software for the attenuator by putting in a new menu system. So if you press and hold, you switch to a new menu. And to help you identify that you've switched to a new level or menu is there's now a piezo buzzer and a very small vibration motor inside the device. So you will feel and hear 
a uh, physical and audio uh, reaction when you, uh, when you interact with this. When you press, you get a small buzz and, and the press on the device at this level affects the uh, track. It basically advances to the next music track. So if I go back to the main menu, so I can turn up the volume, press and hold, and there we go. So press it and it just advances the track. I haven't built in anything to go back a track yet. I'm thinking maybe a double tap. I uh, haven't quite, not that I haven't worked it out, but I haven't played around with it that much. And the other thing is, if I really don't want the effects up that high, I can now turn it down at this level too. So, there we go, to the next track. Now if I actually wanna stop it, I just go back to the main menu press again, now the music has stopped and the effects stay at the volume that they were set. Now, why did I do that? Well, like I said, you got the, you got the wand in one hand, you're throwing a particle stream, get the smoke effects going, the crowd likes it. How do you change the tracks? What if the volume's too high? Whatever. So now with this on my shoulder, I did like the fact that I can sort of have a one hand operation. I can I can keep the wand out. I can change the volume. I can skip tracks. I can have some control over things that I would normally have to go into the menu in order to modify. And I don't want to be looking down and looking at the bar graph to see what menu I'm on. This this device lets me do all of that sort of not hands free, but each hand is actually doing something. And this feels kind of natural. I'm like I'm interacting with the with the pack and the equipment. Um, that was uh, and that was something that I really wanted to keep um, feeling organic. Is interactions with this device feel somewhat natural? And so on. In that respect, uh, there's one more feature that I wanted to add, and that was. Uh, what does the attenuator actually do? So, as we know, this has been mostly a, a showpiece. So every device that I've seen out kind of has some, some of the same characteristics. It does the same things, more or less. Yeah, there's lights, there's uh, animations. That's great. That was kind of the whole idea of why Adam Savage had built it, was he, he wanted more lights on the front, and he backed that with the idea of what if Egon kept working on the pack after the events in 1984 and 1989, and uh, what would he have come up with? So I wanted to take it a step further and have it do something a bit more. Uh, adjusting the volume and all that, that's a little more functional, utilitarian for cosplay, but what about in ghost busting? So, so you're throwing a stream, Okay, so we got a new, I've got a new bar graph animation in there. And as you can see that we've got, or here, uh, we've got lights and sounds and vibration that occurs when we go into the overheat. So we got the warning sequence, and then if we let it go too long, we go into the vent. But what is the point of the vent? What does that have to do with the attenuator? And it occurred to me, they are probably part of the same reason why this device exists. And that is, you're fighting the big bad. You need, you are on full stream, you've gone full stream. System's starting to overheat or not. What if there's some interaction that you have to do to maybe bring the pack back in line, back into compliance or, you know, adjust something, you know, attenuate. So what is it that you're attenuating? And so I was looking at Wikipedia thinking, all right, well, what kind of cyclotron would Egon have based his design off of? Started reading up on that stuff. So looking at the, the real science to come up with the pseudoscience, if you will. And so there are some that require, you know, modification of the magnetic field that helps, you know, uh, keep up the velocity of the particles in the in the accelerator. So 
there's a couple of different real science-based reasons uh, why you would have to adjust the cyclotron. And I think the attenuator is just that device. It, it attenuates the pack for real. Um, there is something in there that, you know, when running at full power, maybe uh, that, that's the reason why it overheats. But if you were able to adjust something, uh, adjust that factor, maybe that's what keeps the pack from overheating. So my idea was, all right, one-handed operation, I'm throwing a stream, waiting for this to overheat. And, uh-oh, no, 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 I, I need a bit more power, I need more time. Okay, let me adjust, reach up and adjust this thing. And now I've just bought myself a little more time. I've, I've delayed the inevitable. And I've set it up so you can turn it either direction and it'll do the same thing. Because I figured, you know, if you're acting the part, you don't want to have to think too much about, well, oh, if I turn it, you know, this way it does this thing. If I turn it that way, just as soon as it hits the warning phase, either way you turn it, uh, it'll, it'll cancel. And that was also to make it, again, I want it to feel organic, that you're not just fiddling with the device for no reason. There's there's actually a, a rhyme or reason as to why you would be turning the dial. You're you're trying to dial in the the right frequency or adjust the magnetic fields or whatever. Um, so that's so that's the main um, the main changes to the attenuator. The other thing that I was thinking of was what if the you know why does this exist now? And it kind of makes sense that if you pick up from Afterlife, now that Phoebe has discovered her grandfather's underground uh, workshop, what if uh, she came across old notes of his? What if this, you know, what if this was a design that Egon had, had theorized or completely designed, but just never got around to building? Or maybe there's a half-completed one on the workbench somewhere. We don't know. So my thought was, how could this actually have a backstory to make it, again, feel more grounded in the, uh, in the canon? And so it feels like the most logical place is, yeah, it, it, it was discovered by Phoebe after the events in, um, in Afterlife, where it, when she had more time to explore her grandfather's workshop and came across either the half-completed device or notes and finished it herself. And now this is, and that's why this is now part of the, uh, part of the kit. So that's, uh, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, I'm, I'm happy with the features, but I'm also curious about what, what would you have the attenuator do? Um, if you were to, if you were to have this device attached to your kit, does the stuff that it uh, does it do what it do make sense? Uh, is it um, uh, is it nice to have those features? I I personally think so. That's kind of why, <laughs> that's kind of why I was like I want I want this stuff built in uh, day one, and then started working on those uh, the volume and and music adjustments uh, after the fact or after using it for a bit. But then I also wanted that um, tie-in back to why does it why does it exist in the Ghostbusters universe other than it's it's a pretty thing that you know blinky lights and uh, flashiness so added the added the sound added the vibration so it feels a little more like it's you know it's all one one unit so anyways curious um, I'll post this video course on my uh, YouTube channel, but I'll also uh, then post it over in the GP Star forum. So if you got some ideas, uh, sound off. Uh, I'm still poking and prodding at this thing. We are, I'm working with Frito Technology right now. The idea is to uh, take the Arduino Nano chipset, the same one that's in that device, and put that on a chip and have a uh, controller board that also uh, can be purchased. It'd be a, a pretty much a full kit. It'd have all the connectors for it. This is the Fruto, the same Fruto bar graph uh, that was used in the wand. We're gonna try to, you know, work out some sort of a, a kit. But 
yeah, that, that's currently being designed at the moment. So yeah, before that becomes um, solidified with, uh, with whatever features it has and software, open to suggestions, let me know. Thanks.